Welcome to Today in Prophecy, daily news in 15 minutes or less. Columbia protester who demanded humanitarian aid for anti-Israel occupiers is now teaching classes. Not sure if you remember uh, this person who was demanding aid during the protests at the end of the year last year or all through the spring also. Uh, but get this, university protests who inf infamously demanded humanitarian aid and a glass of water for violent anti-Israel occupiers earlier this year is now teaching a class at the Ivy League school that undergrads are required to take. So it's a required class, and these are the protesters, the anti-Israel protesters. Uh, I mean, you look at this, and now that person is teaching a required class? This is just nuts. Uh, but this is the world that we live in. Well, uh, let's continue from there because we have more news today. Crimes against nature, 72% of the people want people who damage climate to face jail time. You've got to be kidding me. No, I, I'm not kidding you. Uh, this is 72%, get this. As the world grapples with climate change and environmental calamities, a new survey is revealing a surprising shift in public opinion. It turns out that most people around the globe now want to see serious criminal consequences for those who harm the planet. Imagine if damaging the environment was treated like a serious crime, right, uh, crime, uh, right up there with theft or fraud, well, that's exactly what's, what a whopping 72% of people across 18 major countries want to see happen. This eye-opening find comes from the Global Commons Survey of 2024, a massive research project that took the pulse of 22,000 people across some of the world's biggest economies. So what does this actually mean? Researchers are talking about making it a, crime, a criminal offense for government officials or corporate executives to give the green light to actions that seriously harm nature or the climate. Think of it as putting Mother Nature under legal protection. There's a quote, the majority support 72% for criminalizing actions which allow serious damage to the climate surprised us. Um, I, listen, it doesn't surprise me simply because we just hear the drum just keeps pounding. You have to have an electric car, even though making the batteries damages the environment far worse than any oil production was or does or petroleum. Uh, so you start listening to all of these things, how awful you are if you have a barbecue, you know, just the insane types of things. In places like California, with new builds, you can't use natural gas. Well, it's just a few years ago where natural gas was the best thing for the environment. So obviously, since they're saying, oh, now you can't use that, everything's got to be electric, there's something else going on. What is it that's going on? Listen, this is about control. It's about manipulation, and they want to get everybody off of uh, other types of energy. So what put us on electricity, you have huge problems, obviously, uh, the grid can't handle it. In fact, with AI and the electricity that's required to run AI, listen, the, the United States can't handle this, let alone the rest of the world. The electric uh, electricity that's necessary to run everything that they are saying. So what is it really about? It's, about, it's really about uh, controlling the masses, subduing the masses of people, locking them down. I mean, once you can do this, you can eliminate the ability for people to travel. You start looking, hey, with, when you have everything on electricity, you press a button, everything's down. You can shut down entire cities. You can shut down a car. You can do all of these different things as we look at this dynamic. But here it is. The, the, they just keep pounding the drum. And especially with younger people, it's really difficult to uh, have a frame of reference to argue against it because you've been told if you're 20 years old you've been told since the day you were born hey this is the hottest summer in the history of the world it's the coldest winter in the history of the world i've been told these things over and over and over again and you have no frame of reference to know that every year it's hot in the summer every year it's cold in the winter this is the way it is uh, but and we used to call it weather now it's called climate change and it's your fault we have to do something about it. By the way, it was uh, back, I think, in 1993 when the Club of Rome, uh, in their book, they, in fact, I have the quote, maybe I'll find it for our next TIP program, 
Um, they have the very quote that it is, uh, we can make these climate laws based on pollution, uh, warming, that type of thing, and we can create it so that man is the enemy, therefore we can go after man. I'll get the quote for you next time, but you look at that and you realize this is a plan, so when we see something like this, we go, aha, I see what's going on. By the way, I want to thank everybody who was able to uh, make it last night to 412 Church in Temecula with my guest John Haller and everybody who watched online. If you haven't caught it yet, go ahead and catch it. Um, we have our next one is coming up on October 13th at 412 Church in Temecula Sunday night with Naftali. He's coming all the way from uh, Israel, going to be joining us. Many of you already know who Naftali is. Uh, but if you don't follow him, you should follow him. But he's going to be joining us October 13th, Sunday night. It's going to be a great time. Uh, we're, we want to do these. They're prophecy updates, but we want to turn them into like uh, mini conferences uh, for the Sunday nights that we're doing. And by the way, we also have our end of the world conference coming up in 412 Church in Temecula in November. Check it out. Uh, Eric Stackelbeck has been added to the line of speakers. And, uh, and then also one more thing, if you would like to go to Israel with me, I'm going in March. I've limited to only one bus, so I'm on the same, I'm traveling with everybody the whole time. I'd love to meet you guys. Uh, you can check that out at the events page uh, at hopeforourtimes.com. Go over there. We'd love to have you join us in Israel. It is going to be limited uh, because we're not going to just just keep going and going and filling it and filling it. And uh, we wouldn't be going if it wasn't going to be safe, but it is going to be a spectacular trip. I get people asking me all the time, are you going to Israel? Yes. So check it out at the Hope for Our Times website, at the events page that is Israel coming up here in March. It's going to be absolutely terrific. If you want to have a terrific time, make sure that you join us. All right. You ready for the next one? Let's move on. A zero Hedge reports, can't take it anymore. Residents of Springfield, Ohio, beg for help after 20,000 Haitians overwhelm the city and eat local wildlife. The city of Springfield, Ohio, population 60,000, has been overwhelmed by roughly 20,000 Haitian illegal immigrants who flock to the city exacerbating a significant housing crisis, according to city officials, and eating pets and wildlife. Wow, unbelievable. This is, I mean, I'm looking at this during an October 27th city commission, August 27th uh, city commission meeting, one local resident said the Haitians were in the park grabbing ducks, cutting the heads off, and eating them, just unbelievable. Another local resident posted to Facebook group that their neighbor had a cat go missing only to see it hanging from a branch like you do a deer for butchering. And they, the Haitians, were carving it up to eat it. Uh, folks, this is, so I want you to think about this immigration evil that has happened here. Check this out. Kamala Harris, a quote from her, Look, listen to what she said just not too long ago. We extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants. They need our support. Well, thank you, Kami Kamala, uh, for what you have done. Uh, just absolutely destroying the United States of America. Folks, this is about illegal immigrant immigration, illegal aliens coming into the United States. Some say that's hate speech. Listen, this is evil what is happening. The, the entire system has been overrun, not just by the terrorists, evil things like this with uh, what the Haitians are doing in Springfield, Ohio, and what Kami Kamala said, uh, we're going to bring 100,000 in here, Chinese nationals, Somalis, Iranian terrorists in this country, not to mention the drug cartel, the sex trafficking, fentanyl, not to mention just overwhelming all social services, taking jobs from Americans, giving them to people who are here illegal. This is absolutely evil. And I'm telling you, this is done intentionally. They want to destroy this country. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus said this. 
He said, listen, a house divided cannot stand. The United States of America is absolutely divided. A couple of verses later, look it up yourself. Matthew chapter 12, uh, Jesus then said, if the thief is going to take the house, he has to first bind the strong man. That's what these globalists are doing. They are binding the strong man. The strong man has been the United States of America. And you get these pundits that are on the r mainstream media that are saying how wonderful all of these wicked things are that are taking place. Just absolutely evil. America is in trouble, folks. Uh, this is happening. God is sovereign. And I got to wonder, uh, uh, has God, has the judgment of America already begun on the United States of America? But just absolutely evil uh, to witness what is happening here um, and, and see what's going on also over in Europe. Terrible. All right. Speaking of Europe. EU introduce, introduces biometric digital travel docu documents for visitors to the block. The European Union is introducing an automated broader registration computer system for registering travelers from countries outside the EU, including short-stay visa holders and visa-exempt travelers. Each time they cross an EU external border, the system aims to replace the current manual passport stamping process automated border control system known as the entry exit system or ees collects biometric data including fingerprints captured facial images and the date and place of entry and exit biometric registration will be needed on first use with subsequent visits requiring only one of the biometric checks practically Facial biometrics will be used. You look at this and you can't, you, you got to think how much closer we are getting to that place of the mark of the beast where no one can buy or sell or travel, right? You can't buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast on your right hand or on your forehead. All of these different identifiers, everything's going into a database. So what we have is just lawlessness that is abounding destroying everything, and then the powers that be that intentionally are destroying everything say, well, we now we're going to clean up. We have a solution. We're going to do a digital ID for everyone. Sam Altman says we're going to scan the iris of every human being on the planet. Listen, this is the plan. Destroy everything and then come in with the solution. They, they light the fire, and then they turn around to sell you the fire extinguisher. That is exactly what's happening. In the last days, what do we have? Two different things happening at the same time. Jesus said in Matthew 24, lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. Cold. Listen, lawlessness, according to the words of Jesus, is going to increase. Imagine that. But then also this increase is going to lead to Revelation chapter 6, the rider on the white horse, conquering in to conquer, and this control system of the beast or Antichrist with the ten kings. It's all going there. The lawlessness is going to lead to that. So you look at this, put it into the right context. It helps us to understand we are where we are. Say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Man, no kidding. Hey, if you'd like to go to Israel with me, I would love it. Again, we're only going to, it's limited seating. We're only going to do one bus. I want to, I'm going to be traveling with you guys the whole time. It'd be great to get to know you, anybody who can do it. That's uh, coming up in March of 2025. Uh, it will be safe. We only go to safe places. It will be off the charts. Check it out at hopeforourtimes.com. And uh, again, hey, go back, check out the John Haller uh, video last night from 412 Church in Temecula. If you weren't able to join us in person and you joined us online, thank you guys for all of your support. We couldn't do this without you. Uh, God bless you. And I will be seeing you actually later on today. Uh, John Randall is going to be my guest. God bless you.